Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Game On. Today we're going to sleuth our way through one of Justin's favorite board games. Oh uh, yes. Are you one of those people that can solve those NBC Nightline things within the first 10 minutes? Do you watch too much NCIS and know exactly who what the killer was? And who killed that jogger for the 15th time? Well, if you're any good at that, you're going to find out how bad you are, really, at solving crimes <laughs> with this game. Sure, like <laughs> Yeah. This, this game is going to make you feel grossly inadequate very quickly, but you'll have a good time doing it. Oh, yes. So, the basic premise of this game is you are presented with a case through a case of booklet. Um, this game, why don't we tell them what game it is? Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective? I thought he, we said that already. He, he says it with a question mark at the end. <laughs> but It's a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the first mystery to solve is, what are we talking about? My apologies, everyone. I thought we said the name of the game already. Uh, no, uh, Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective starts you out with a rules booklet where you are given basically the intro of a story. Unlike, uh, a, unlike an RPG, this is a story-based game, but there is no DM or Game Master. It's basically almost a choose-your-own-adventure, but it's really, really on rails for the most part. Yeah, I would say it's on several sets of rails. Um, there are story tracks that you work your way through, the order in which or which elements you, you select are, are pretty versatile. Yes. But yeah, within each story track, they are fairly linear. So basically, you're given a story that one of the players is going to read aloud. Nobody is really in charge. There's every You're all a group of investigators who works with Wiggins, if you're familiar at all with the uh, Sherlock Holmes uh, novels. And... Your baby Wiggins and the Merry Men, <laughs> um, and you're not Wiggins like gives you the creeps, Wiggins, but yes, yeah. <laughs> um, and and the thing that I would say about that is is having played this particular one, yes, um, you know, people read out elements in the story. Nobody knows anything more than anybody else at the start of the game in terms of how it's going to resolve. So everybody is discovering things at the same time. Yes. And basically at that point, uh, once the, it's done, once the intro paragraph is done, you're given a couple of clues, and then you're basically set out to figure out what is going on. And probably one of the best things that you can do before anything else is read the newspapers. <laughs> There's a lot, a lot, a lot of reading in this game, um, which is not a bad thing. Uh, but... It, it rewards reading comprehension uh -huh. and very detailed <laughs> note-taking and paying uh -huh. attention to what you consume. If you're a skimmer, uh -uh. <laughs> ain't gonna work. <laughs> because um, this, is, this specific uh, case, you know, this newspaper was from full five days before this case was. So this was on an earlier case. Um, who knows that this attacked by a bear in the back here could have something in here, like one sentence that is actually going to help you with this. Like, it was at a fair. Maybe somebody in here was killed at a fair. So now you know that there's a fair in town. This will tell you where it is. That kind of thing. You really got to skim through it. And then... Don't skim. Oh, read. Sorry, that's what I meant. You, you got to pour through them all. And boy, oh boy... You gotta understand that this game is gonna take a couple of hours. The the later <laughs> the the later the case, like this is case eight, we have multiple newspapers to, to read and go through. The good thing is is that you don't need to know any of the old cases to progress through to the new ones. So you can just pick up five and go with it. Yeah. But that also means that you might have three or four newspapers. Whereas with case one, you're always gonna have one newspaper. So it's always good to start kind of light. Yeah, well, yeah, the, the, the easier case, easier. Uh, the case that has less source material uh, means that you'll get to focus on your technique a little bit more and on the amount of 
reading and research a little bit less. So you you hone your skills when there's little less to work with, and then once you get better at recognizing what the important details might be in those stories, you'll have a couple under your belt so that when you're buried in source material, you have a better chance of finding what you need out of it. Um, and uh, once you find a person or a location of interest, either through one of the clues that's given to you in the in the opening arguments or the dossier yeah <laughs> or even in the newspapers let me under i just i can't hit home enough that the newspapers are very important to understand and what's going on in the t in the city of london you get the nice london directory which i will make sure to zoom in on and post <laughs> <laughs> which has everybody in London, like A through yeah. Z. They, they almost <laughs> literally give you a phone book in this game. Which, look, we're, we're kind of making fun of it, but it's actually really cool. The amount of effort and the amount of material that they pack into this game makes it very rich and very re rewarding and very... It's, it's, a, it's a hearty, filling meal of, of a gaming experience. This yeah. is not... You know, it's a board game, but it is... It's more than a board game. It's yeah, and 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 let's say that like we had to figure, we found out that you know there was a crime committed at Cadbury Egg or Cadbury Cocoa. Cadbury Egg? <laughs> yeah. Well, they may think, not yet. Um, but we'll find out through this handy dandy uh, list that Cadbury uh, chocolate is in seventy six Southeast. So what does that mean? We pull up this map, <laughs> which um, if you haven't heard our maps video. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Click on the link that may or may not be appearing on the screen right now. We did a, a video recently about maps and minis. Uh, has very little to do with this video other than the fact that we said the word map and then showed one. Exactly. So we'd find out that maybe it was the, the, the cocoa manufacturing plant was here. But the mur uh, the suspected murderer lives over here. Mm. We're given a fifteen minute by uh, a fifteen minute by walk uh, to scale, and we no seriously, and you literally have to measure out like, okay, well we know that the we know by his alibi that he was back in fifteen minutes, but that was a half an hour to get there to the to do the murder and come back. So there's no way that he could be the murderer unless. Maybe he took a, ca a taxi, which, carriage. by the way, now we have to go and find out where the carriage is through here and go and talk to them. But get it from the horse's mouth, as it were. <laughs> but every person or every location that you go to counts as a point against you because it's like golf. You're trying to solve in the least amount of locations. Um, usually Sherlock gets it in like seven but I think this one, it took us 32. <laughs> <laughs> You're no Sherlock. Let's just be perfectly frank about it. Um, but, but what helped us uh, along the way and what kind of fed us is that there's a lot of mini mystery side quests within the major mystery. Yeah. So while we were trying to figure out who killed this Transylvania count... Um, <laughs> uh, Wait we, a minute. <laughs> I do believe in this one we found um, a murdered prostitute and we helped solve her case. So we might not have been able to solve who killed the count quite quickly, but we did figure out who hey, solved. He's, he's not going to get any more dead. Yeah. So like, what's the hurry, really? Yeah, but we helped that that poor woman of the night have a nice burial. Actually, you know, she was also dead. So. How much we helped her. So the way things end up being scored is... Two at, dead people. <laughs> at the end, uh, there is uh, questions that you have to answer. And you, excuse me, you better have been taking notes. Because <laughs> if you weren't taking notes, you're screwed by this point. <laughs> and then you have to answer these questions. Like, here's the first question. Uh, who killed the Count? Obviously, that's pretty easy, but... Also, arguably the most important question. But what did his coffin contain? I don't know. We have to figure that out. 
But then there was a second series of questions that we have to answer that are like the side quests. Like, where's the remains of Lord Peckman's grandfather? He had nothing to do with the case, but going through all of our things, we found that some we guy was chopped to pieces. We, 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 we read enough <laughs> newspapers that we, we probably should have found some, out some other information. Um, yeah, look, this, is, this game is incredibly involved, which makes it satisfying and fun yeah. uh, but also frustrating and challenging um don't expect to be awesome at it the first time out but be proud of yourself if you solve it and get through it because it's it's not for the it's not for the dilettante and the the you know half attentive player this 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 requires some dedication yeah but and it's I, worth it yeah and i happen to have all the games there are two others um, this happens to be the Jack the Ripper campaign. It's the only one with like a semi-dynamic campaign within it. Um, I will make a quick note on that. I, try, I was trying to play it, but I, I had to take a pause from it. Maybe we can play it together. Um, don't start with the Jack the Ripper campaign because it is a very different rule set and you won't understand really what's going on until you've actually played the game before. So. If you've played a Sherlock Holmes controlling detective game, then you can just jump into it. But if you've never played it, don't play uh, many, Jack the Ripper. How many are there? Three? There's, four? Yeah, there's three. Um, and I, like I said, I have all three. And they and they have multiple, multiple cases and mysteries in each box. So you, yeah. it's not that you you don't buy this and play it once. No. There, there's quite At least a bit. ten times. Uh, yeah. This one has 15 cases in it. So it's... Yeah. You get your money's worth for... I think we I paid under forty for it, so <laughs> no, I, it's it's a satisfying game. It it really is. They they do a nice job with packing the material, the 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 clues, the newspapers, the map. It, it's it's a well rendered sort of comprehensive experience. It's it's a good time. Do you guys have any other uh, mystery games that you like to play as? <laughs> you like to play as a mystery game for <laughs> Halloween. No. Uh, do you have any other mystery games that you like to play that are cooperative? I know that we like to think of Cthulhu. It is a, is a mystery game, but any board games that you guys can uh, let us know about? Because I really like cooperative mystery games. What about you? Um, I like cooperative games in general, um, in all media and genre, whether it's a board game, whether it's an RPG, whether it's a video game. I just... I don't want to be playing against yeah. other players. I don't like um, either. Generally, I, it's just not a satisfying experience for me personally. Um, not that there's anything wrong with it if other people do, but it just I don't. I got enough conflict in my life without finding new reasons to battle my friends. So um, this is fun because this works your brain. It, it pretty much guaranteed that one person is not going to figure out. The whole thing so you actually need to work with a team of people and everybody needs to contribute and pull their weight and find elements to solving the story which is is fun because it means that nobody gets left out everybody exactly. is, is participating and everybody's mind is very important yeah no it, it's good it, it's well it's a well-developed well-designed game I, I like it a lot and i'm not the board game fanatic that justin is but this one this one i had a lot of fun with yep it makes you laugh, it makes you cry, it makes you cry some more. It makes you cry a little bit more, and then you're done. And then you <laughs> die. <laughs> makes you want to lunge across the table and shake somebody by the lapels sometimes. But it's cooperative. It really is. Yes. No, I, it, it, it's good. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> yes. And hopefully you actually play the game after we talk about Thank it. Like people this. getting their butt kicked. Please give our, your comments uh, below on what you think of us. Um, yeah. Uh, and... and other board games of this type or if you're interested if you have suggestions if you have questions uh if you want us to talk about the other uh sherlock games or other stuff on the wall here because justin's got a bunch although i guess the camera angle doesn't show as many of the board games because they're on the low shelves but um anyway thank you guys for from watching you. yeah for sure we talked at the same time game on <laughs> <laughs>